بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد. Greetings of peace, ladies and gentlemen. I just came across the video released a speech by the current Prime Minister of Great Britain, Rishi Sunak, delivered on the 1st of March, that is today, 2024, at 10 Downing Street. And I just wanted to, as I was listening to him present the speech, I felt like it was so poignant to a lot of what I'm discussing, some of the points made. Now, I know there is an inherent apathy around politics in our country and mistrust towards the politicians. And perhaps this is just an astounding piece of rhetoric to stir up the emotions of the British people. But nonetheless, he is addressing a really um, important point. So I'm just going to read it. In recent weeks and months, we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. Rishi Sunak goes on to say, I need to speak to you all this evening because this situation has gone on long enough and demands a response not just from government, but from all of us. Britain is a patriotic, liberal, democratic society with a proud past and a bright future. We are a reasonable country and a decent people. Our story is one of progress, of great achievements and enduring values. Immigrants who have come here have integrated and contributed. They have helped write the latest chapter in our island story. They have done this without being required to give up their identity. You can be a practicing Hindu and a proud Briton, as I am, Rishi Sunak declares, or a devout Muslim and a patriotic citizen, as so many are. Referencing, clearly he should have put, um, or a devout Muslim and patriotic citizen like the Anglo-Islamic gentleman, go check out his YouTube channel, he must have not got the memo. Or a committed Jewish person, he goes on to say, at the heart of your local community, and all underpinned by the tolerance of our established Christian church. I wish it was more prevalent, but the current society seems to be descending into atheistic nihilism. That was my answer. Back to the transcript. We are a country where we love our neighbours. And we are building Britain together. But I fear that our great achievement in building the world's most successful multi-ethnic, multi-faith democracy is being deliberately undermined. There are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. Since October 7th, there have been those trying to take advantage of the very human angst that we all feel and the terrible suffering that war brings to the innocent, to women and children. To advance a divisive, hateful, ideological agenda. On too many occasions recently, our streets have been hijacked by small groups who are hostile to our values and have no respect for our democratic traditions. Membership of our society is contingent on some simple things, that you abide by the rule of law, 
and that change can only come through the peaceful democratic process. Threats of violence and intimidation are alien to our way of doing things. They must be resisted at all times. Nearly everybody in Britain support these basic values, but there are small and vocal hostile groups who do not. Islamist extremists and the far right feed off and embolden each other. They are equally desperate to pretend that their violence is somehow justified, when actually these groups are two sides of the same extremist coin. Neither group except the change in our country. Neither group except that change in our country can only come through the peaceful democratic process. Both loathe the pluralist modern country we are, but want to see Britain and want to set Britain against Britain. This is, an, uh, who wrote this? Who wrote this? This is amazing. Both want to set Britain against Britain, human against human, Muslim or non-Muslim, Jew or non-Jew. We are all people in this land, on this great British Isle. These fools, these absolute hooligans, and those words are mild, these extremists, these Awful people who have no love in their heart, clearly, wish to set Britain against Britain. To weaponize the evils of anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim hatred for their own ends. The faith of Islam, peacefully practiced by millions of our fellow citizens, is emphatically not the same thing as the extremist political ideology of Islamism. which aims to separate Muslims from the rest of society. Islamist extremists and far-right groups are spreading a poison. That poison is extremism. It aims to drain us of our confidence in ourselves as a people and in our shared future. They want us to doubt ourselves, to doubt each other, to doubt our country's history and achievements. They want us to accept the moral equivalence between Britain and some of the most despicable regimes in the world. They want us to accept a moral equivalence between Britain and some of the most despicable regimes in the world. They want us to believe that our country and the West more generally is solely responsible for the world's ills and that we, along with our allies, are the problem. In short, they want to destroy our confidence and hope. We must not allow that to happen. When these groups claim that Britain is and has been on the wrong side of history, we should reject it and reject it again. No country is perfect, but I am enormously proud of the good that our country has done. Our place in history is defined by the sacrifices our people have made in the service of our own freedom and that of others. And when these groups tell children that they cannot and will not succeed because of who they are, when they tell children that the system is rigged against them or that Britain is a racist country, this is not only a lie, but a cynical attempt to crush young dreams and turn impressionistic minds against their own society. I stand here as our country's first non-white prime minister, leading the most diverse government in our country's history, to tell people of all races, all faiths and all backgrounds, it is not the colour of your skin, the God you believe in or where you were born that will determine your success, but just your own hard work and endeavour. We must be prepared to stand up for all shared values in all circumstances. We must be prepared to stand up for our shared values in all circumstances, no matter how difficult. And I respect that the police have a tough job in policing the protests we have seen and that they are operationally independent. But we must draw a line. Yes, 
You can march and protest with passion. You can demand the protection of civilian life. But no, you cannot call for violent jihad. There is no context in which it can be acceptable to beam anti-Semitic tropes onto Big Ben in the middle of a vote on Israel-Gaza. And there can be no cause you can use to justify the support of a proscribed terrorist group like Hamas. Yes, you can freely criticise the actions of the government, or indeed any government. That is a fundamental democratic right. But no, you cannot use that as an excuse to call for the eradication of a state or any kind of hatred or anti-Semitism. This week, I have met with senior police officers and made clear it is the public's expectation that they will not merely manage these protests, but police them. And I say this to the police, we will back you when you take action. But if we are asking more of the police, we in government must also back up that call with action. To that end, this month, the government will implement a new robust framework for how it deals with this issue. To ensure that we are dealing with the root causes of the problem and that no extremist organisations or individuals are being lent legitimacy by their actions and interactions with central government. You cannot be part of our civil life if your agenda is to tear it down. We will redouble our support for the PREVENT programme to stop young minds being poisoned by extremism. We will demand that universities stop extremist activity on campus. We will also act to prevent people entering this country who aim to undermine its values. The Home Security has instructed that if those here on visas choose to spew hate on protests or seek to intimidate people, we will remove their right to be here. And our Britain must not be a country in which we descend into polarised camps, with some communities living parallel lives. It is not enough to live side by side We must live together, united by shared values and a shared commitment to this country. And I want to speak directly to those who choose to continue to protest. Don't let extremists hijack your marches. You have a chance in the coming weeks to show that you can protest decently, peacefully and with empathy for fellow citizens. Let us prove these extremists wrong and show them that even when we disagree, we will never be disunited from our common values of decency and respect. I love this country. My family and I owe it so much. The time has now come for us all to stand together to combat the forces of division and beat this poison. We must face down the extremists who would tear us apart. There must be a leadership not pandering or appeasement. When they tell their lies, we will tell the truth. When they try and sap our confidence, we will redouble our efforts. And when they try and make us doubt each other, we will dig deeper for that extra ounce of compassion and empathy that they want us to believe doesn't exist, but that I know does. If we can do that, We can build on our great achievement in creating today's Britain, a country of kind, decent, tolerant people. We can make this a country in which we all feel a renewed sense of pride. This is our home, so let us go forward together, confident in our values and confident in our future. Bravo to the writer of that speech, and Rishi Sunak, of course, who delivered it exquisitely, unlike myself, with a few trip falls there. I mean, quick breakdown starts off with some very emotive, passionate language, talks about the kind of shared identity 
of this country being the most successful example of a multi-ethnic democracy. I think that's a really fair and, and true statement. Talking about how relevant to this channel, of course, a devout Muslim and a patriotic citizen. I'm loving it. I'm loving the calling out of divisive, hateful ideology, extremism, threats of violence and intimidation, absolutely making the distinction between Islamist extremists and the peaceful majority of Muslims in this country, and this sinister attempt and intention of this movement to set Britain against Britain. It's something that I've been thinking about recently, having been Muslim for a number of years, but really had my head in the sand, not engaging with media, the news, social media, for example, and certainly not releasing videos and not caring about what other people think or do or look or anything like that. Not really bothered or even curious about people's perception of me as a English Muslim. But since these videos came out and there was the, the slurs, the very stuff that is being mentioned in this speech by the Prime Minister, the hate that I can feel against the faith that I subscribe to, it's made me feel a little bit... Obviously, I'm a robust character. The comments are... There's a lot of icy humour and irony and good jest, but something potentially more worrying that, that bubbles um, underneath the surface. And it's made me feel more inclined to want to leave this country, that I sense that there's an unspoken hatred for Muslims in general, as opposed to the, the specific Islamist extremist sects. And hopefully... The faith of Islam, of course, being practiced peacefully by millions of British citizens who have successfully spoken and learned the English language and who contribute to the society, NHS workers, lawyers, teachers, and so on. For these people to receive the hate from, as he said, the other side of the extremist coin... It's almost we respond from one, the, the Islamist extremist, and then we create a nationalist extremist to fight that extremist -ness. And it all gets very messy. And I'm really interested because there's a couple of things from this that spring to mind. It's obviously got to a point now where the government has felt that it's necessary to put out this speech to the people. And require and and desire of the people a change from whether it be the protesting in relation to the war in the holy land or whether it be neighborliness between citizens in day-to-day -day life and and not to have this mistrust just based on on judgment perhaps so I feel that at the beginning, it's so emotive and, and robust and just hits the nail on the head. Then it goes on to start talking about how to clamp down. And maybe this is something really interesting about how, whether it be in the past, the war on terrorism what happened post 9-11 in America, what happened during the recent pandemic with, you know, in extreme situations in order to protect the citizens, more draconian legislation is implemented. So about this doubling down, we need to increase control, government authority in order to diminish 
the, the threat, so to speak. So that's a really interesting political discussion um, that must be had. I love this country and I also love Al-Islam. So I had to just do this video. It's going to be really pertinent to the video I'm going to do now, the part two, to Abdul Hakim Murad's essay, Can Liberalism Tolerate Islam? Speaking about the classical liberalism as opposed to the modern day liberal agenda. But I really do think that there is power in that speech. The vast majority, the vast majority of it, I think, is so powerful and and really on point. I mean, here, the Home Secretary has instructed that if those here on visas choose to spew hate on protests or seek to intimidate people, we will remove their right to be here. There needs to be again. Big up the Farage. There needs to be, and I've also thought about this with Tommy Robinson. Although potentially a well, a very powerful and potentially worrying figure to some, he does ultimately raise a fair point at the at the root of all this about the lack of integration, about the the problems of the immigrants and I think that we really should decipher separate the faith the religion of Islam with people with from Muslim families with Muslim names who have come to the west and if people are engaging in drugs violence sexually illicit activity then they may well be called Muhammad Ali or Omar Suleiman, etc. Hassan Yusuf. They may have these Muslim names, but they have been corrupted, westernized. I mean that in relation to the general upbringing in this country involves illicit sexual activity, drugs and alcohol. And these thing, things Islam completely condemns. So we're going to leave it there. Any benefit from the video is from Allah. Any mistakes and errors are my own. Peace and blessings upon everybody watching the video. If you've watched this far, then certainly subscribe to the channel, like the video, and please comment on the Prime Minister's speech addressed to the nation and how he really calls for exactly what I'm calling for, which is dialogue, which is to remove the veil of mistrust and ignorance relating to the reality of the peaceful practicing Muslim population as opposed to the political extreme ideology of is Islamism. Um, which the Muslim, the Muslims themselves need to condemn. And that's the call he has made in the speech. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the coming weeks and months unfold. My fear will be that there'll be a crackdown, a, a legislative, a, legis, a legislative, a legislative crackdown to remove the freedoms of the people increase the power of the state because this call from the pm will not be taken up and the extremist groups will continue to operate so thanks so much for your time really interesting stuff big up your good selves